My name is Jared Swartz, Granby, Missouri. I own Swartz Tractors in the Osho, Missouri, and we sell tractors and Exmark mowers and restore Indian motorcycles as a hobby. When I was born, my dad had a Indian motorcycle business in Granby. It was the Italian version of the Indian that were dirt bikes, and that was from the early 70s to mid 70s. So I've been on an Indian motorcycle my whole life, started working on them as young as I can remember. Then it went into vintage dirt bikes. As I got to be an adult, I started working on antique tractors. Didn't have the money for antique motorcycles. So about 20 years ago, I bought my first antique Indian and been restoring them ever since. I can't prove for sure, but according to the paperwork that I have, I think I'm the third owner because I have the original MSO and the original title of the original owner then he sold it to a guy in Indiana, and then I bought it. That's kind of a tough question on how long it takes to restore one, because it really doesn't take but about two months to restore one. What takes all the time is getting everything gathered. You know, you're waiting on an engine build, you're waiting on the frame maybe to get straightened, then the paint work, uh, send bolts off to have them CAD plated, but once you get everything in a pile, about two months, but you might as well say it's an eight months to 10 months process just gathering everything up. The motorcycle was a very nice original survivor. So all the hardware on the bike is all original to the bike. It was taken off and all the CAD plating redone. The pipes exhaust was original, had them re-chromed along with the wheels and all the fender trim and badging was also all original and was just cleaned up. So we used as much original pieces as we could. On this motorcycle, everything is original parts of 52 or 53, minimal aftermarket parts such as battery, battery box and tires, and some is new old stock. Well, an MSO normally never even gets to an owner. It's the manufacturer's origin of the new bike going from the manufacturer to the dealer and somehow or another one, this one stayed with the bike because the dealer normally takes care of the MSO to give the paperwork to the first owner to get it titled. So, so the MSO is the paperwork from Indian motorcycle to the Indian dealer. Normally does not go to the owner. Always had the love for antique tractors and motorcycles. I grew up in an Indian dealership and I started off with a body shop doing cars that turned into tractors and finally at a time in my life got enough money to get into the motorcycles and I just enjoy all three and still do all three. My mom retired from sports tractors about two years ago. She worked for me about 10 years and my dad and my uncle are both retired but they still do some delivers for me, sometimes come over and help me. Uh, my uncle just retired from Kansas and him and my dad hang out in the shop back behind the tractor shop and work on cars and motorcycles. But now that everybody is retired, it is just me holding the fort down, running the show. The engine was sent off to Faber Cycle and they did the engine and they would acquire any of the new parts from Kiwi Indian. The new old stock seat and new old stock speedometer come from Starklight Indian. They had it at their business. All the paint work and paint locally by me, sent the frame off to be powder coated by TKQ. The tires were from Coker and everything else on the bike was original to the bike and just refurbished. I got the bike from a gentleman in Indiana, but originally the bike was built in July of 1952 and shipped to MacArthur, West Virginia uh, in August of 52. And then it was sold at MacArthur Indian Sales in MacArthur, New Jersey in August of 53. The, the reason a 52-53 Indian is special is they were going bankrupt, pretty much done. And the, a British company was gonna take them over. And there was very few 52-53 Chiefs built. Even though they had great plans, they had a lot of one year only new stuff on the 52-53 and then the Indian Motorcycle Company was over in 53 and was taken over with British bikes. 
Well, it has the original dash ignition switch, the original idiot light for the charging system and a new old stock speedometer. Gas tanks are original and in 52, they were narrower at the rear end of the tanks. Fenders are original and in 52, they had a higher cut valance on the front of them with a different look. The Martin Senior type paint, base coat, clear coat, and it's called Cashin Green. Some people call it Jade Green. And Indian put a special badging on the tanks that year behind the Indian that said 80 cubic inches because they were advertising the new 80 cubic inch motor. Faber cycle, and they line board it, put a new counter shaft in the transmission, all new bearings, all new pistons and rings, the engine cases, and most of the transmission and the jugs and heads were all original to bike. Faber cycle, when they did the engine, they completely disassembled the motor and bead blasted all the cases and the cylinder heads and the jugs, uh, repainted the jugs, cleaned up the heads, bored the cylinders, put new counter shaft in the clutch and all bearings, uh, actually found new old stock clutch plates and a new old stock primary chain, rebuilt all the valves and valve springs, valve covers were re-chromed, uh, intake was bead blasted, machined so it wouldn't have any leaks, and the Amel carburetor, which is very unique to the bike, was completely rebuilt also. The numbers match on this bike, motor and frame. What is also unique to a 52 and 53 is the frame numbers used to be on the bottom left of the frame where the shock goes in. Now on a 52 and 53, the frame number is up on the front right corner of the frame where the footboard is and the engine is still on the lower left of the engine itself. The bike has the original toolbox, has original front forks, which has been refurbished. New in 52 and 53, the upper legs of the front end was black in the previous years and they chromed the lower legs in 52 and 53. Handlebars are original and the handlebar twist grip and the Amel throttle control and choke control was not restored, it was very nice and original condition, so we left it. One of the people who helped with this bike and all of my other bikes, if I have any questions, is Mike Thomas of Kiwi Inden and Chris Smith out of Pittsburgh, Kansas. They have helped me learn a lot over the years. Other than that, it was just me and my guys at work on the frame and the painting and assembly, and of course, Faber Cycle on the engine. The bike only has 78 miles on it since we have restored it just to break it in and attune the carburetor and did one oil change. The strange thing with me when restoring an old motorcycle, I may be different than a lot of other people. I lose interest in it after it's restored because I'm very proud of it, but now it's done. All the fun is bringing it back to life, getting to ride it, it clears your mind. Uh, the old motorcycles are so mechanical you have to do everything. And it's just so far away from today's technology. It's just relaxing and when it's done, I put it in the corner and look at it. But I ride them every day until they're done. As soon as I finish a project, there's another one waiting and can't wait to get started.